writing chemical equations and types of reactions. We're going to be looking at a number of chemical uh, reactions or types of reactions in this course, but we're going to focus on each one as an individual episode so we can just focus on one type of reaction at a time. The first one that we're going to be looking at is the synthesis reactions. These are one of the simplest to identify, okay? And the reason is, well, because you have two or more reactants that combine to form one new product. And that's really the key. So what you're looking for is in the product side, okay? So remember we have reactants in a chemical equation that produces some kind of a product, okay? So we have two or more reactants that will form only one product in the end, and that's a synthesis reaction, okay? So one of the simplest to identify. So let's uh, look at it in terms of, I guess, some kind of analogy using just common lettering. And we have here some kind of an X combined with some kind of a Y to form a combination of the two together. Okay, so they're the easiest to find because we start off, as we said, two or more reactants to form one final product. Okay, two or more to one. Okay. So let's look at some real compounds, real atoms. So if we're going to write a balanced chemical equation. The key also is we're, we're not going to focus too much on balancing. We might just touch upon it uh, as an introduction, but uh, focus on balancing chemical equations from previous episodes, please. So we're going to balance the following chemical equation, the following reaction type. We have sodium and oxygen. Now, one thing to keep in mind is, as I've said, the, the most important thing to always identify your metal and your non-metal. And we know that in a synthesis reaction, somehow these two are going to come together to form one final product. And because you're combining a metal and a non-metal, you're going to be using the five-step crossover rule. Okay. So we're going to write the formula for the reactants. So start off with just writing out the reactants. And the reactants are as follows. Sodium and oxygen. And remember oxygen, oxygen is diatomic. And that's why we don't write it down as just O, we write it down as O2. So now we want to figure out what will the product be based on these two reactants. Well, we're not going to use the five step crossover rule. We're going to use the electron dot diagram. And so we start off here with oxygen, and oxygen has six valence electrons. We know sodium has one. And we know that metals have a tendency to lose electrons to the nonmetals. So let's watch that. I watch us lose that electron. Watch sodium lose it. Now, oxygen requires one more. So we need one more sodium. And that other sodium is also going to lose that valence electron to oxygen. And now, both sodiums are stable. Both the one oxygen is stable, which means that for us to combine sodium and oxygen together, they form a formula of Na2O. You can do this without using the, the electron dot diagram. You can use the five-step crossover rule. And please refer to um, the previous um, episodes on the crossover rule. Okay. So, and then what's left once we've done this is, well, we need to balance it. So how do you balance an equation? Well, you separate your reactants from your products, okay? And we list the atoms that we have both on the reactant side and the product side. And then we list how many of each that we have. And we have as follows. And now if, if we notice the sodium here we have on the reactant side, we have one as opposed to two on the product side. So we need to increase the sodiums on the, the reactant side. On the product side, however, the oxygens are the ones that we need to increase. So remember, you're always looking to see which side needs to increase the number of atoms that it has. So let's try to balance the following. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a 2 in front of sodium, which means now the sodium count is going to be 2 to 2. 
Okay, now we want to go over to the other side. We want to increase the number of oxygens here. So we're going to put the number 2 here. And that 2 is going to increase the number of oxygens here. 2 to 2. And now we no longer need to balance that so far. But once we've done that, we notice that it also has changed the sodium count. The sodium count now has moved up to 4, which means now that I need to increase the sodiums here, which means this too no longer works for us. And don't panic. It's okay if you come across that because all we have to do is change the number, that number 2, to the number that we need, which is a 4. And now this sodium count moves up to 4, which now allows us to have our sodiums balanced at 4 on either side and our oxygens balanced on both sides as well. Okay. Let's look at uh, the next slide here. Write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction between the following compounds. Now we're going to be looking at two that we're going to consider as non-metals. So we have nitrogen and hydrogen. And remember, both of them are diatomic. Okay, so both nitrogen and hydrogen are diatomic, which means when we're writing out the formula, they're N2 plus H2. Okay, now, when we're putting these together, well, it works a little bit differently to the, the um, binary ionic compounds. We're not going to be using the five-step crossover rule. In fact, right now, what, what happens is we're going to be forming a covalent bond. So... We know that the nitrogen has five valence electrons. It needs three more to become stable. So where do you think it's going to pick them up from? Well, it's going to share them with three hydrogens. So the electrons here are going to share with one another, but they're not going to give them away. They're going to share them, forming single bonds between the one nitrogen and three hydrogens, which thus means that when we combine nitrogen and hydrogen together, we form a formula of NH3. Okay, now we have to balance the following equation. Same rule applies. We're going to separate the reactants from our products, and we have so we have uh, nitrogen and hydrogen, and we list them in the same order on both sides. Okay, we have two nitrogens on the reactant side. We have one on the product side. We have two hydrogens on the reactant side, but we have three on the product side, which means when we're trying to balance it, we need to increase the sodiums on the product side, and we need to increase the hydrogens on the reactant side, okay? But we're not going to balance the following equation. We're just going to have it balanced already for us here. And these are the numbers that... Um, pretty much we would put as coefficients for these compounds, okay? And we're balanced. So let's look at a few others, okay? Let's look at a few other quick um, compounds. We have lithium combined with chlorine. Metal, non-metal, okay? So we have lithium plus chlorine, chlorine being diatomic. Lithium and chlorine, when they come together, they form the, the compound LiCl. Remember that this is used, if you use the, the five-step crossover rule, that's how you get the lithium chloride. Okay, and to balance it, we place twos in those places. Aluminum and bromine. Again, metal, non-metal. Aluminum is just Al. Bromine is diatomic, so it's Br2. So Al plus Br2 produces, and if we use the five-step crossover rule, okay, remember, aluminum is plus three, bromine is negative one. Don't worry about that number. That number is not going to play a role in this final formula. Look at that. AlBr3. Okay? We have Br2 on this side. They don't mean anything together. Okay? We have bromine on one side. But together, in order to put these together, we need to do the five-step crossover rule. Okay? And then finally, what's left to do, well, is to just balance the, um, the two sides. Okay? And the last one that we're going to be looking at is potassium plus sulfur, okay? Potassium 
K, sulfur is just S, we combine them together, again, metal, non-metal, using the five-step crossover rule, and we get the formula K2S. And in order to balance this one, real simple, just place uh, the number two in front of the potassium on the product side. Okay, few variations, a uh, few changes that uh, um, to IB will identify in terms of synthesis reactions, and here are some of the tougher ones to be able to identify, okay? is we've looked at when we put together two different atoms, okay, two different molecules. What we're going to be looking at now are, is what happens when we put together two different compounds. And this is where we might identify it incorrectly. But let's look at two very important types of synthesis reactions. One of them is a non-metal oxide combined with water produces an acid, okay? So the non-metal combined with the, sorry, uh, with oxide. Then the other one is a metal combined with the oxide and water to produce a base, okay? Now, bases, one thing to keep in mind, most of them that we're gonna be looking at are gonna have the hydroxide um, polyatomic combined with the metal. In terms of the non-metal oxide combined with water to produce the acid, well the acid that we're creating is what we call an oxy acid. Okay? And oxy acids are merely polyatomics. Okay, polyatomics, okay, um, that are that bind or, or are in combination with hydrogen, but this time we are treating the hydrogen as a cation, okay? meaning that it's going to have the, a positive charge. So let's look at, uh, at an example. Here we have a metal oxide okay, plus water. Real simple. We're going to take the metal and remember the base we said, the hydroxide. So we're going to combine this metal with hydroxide and we're going to get the formula NaOH. Okay, let's erase some of that. But remember that that's polyatomic. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to balance it. Okay, and we put the two there in front and the following compound is, is balanced. But now let's look at a non-metal oxide, so a sulfur trioxide combined with water. And as we said, it produces an acid. More importantly, it produces what we call this oxy acid. And the oxy acid is the polyatomic combined with a hydrogen. So think about what polyatomic might come to mind when we're looking at sulfur trioxide. And if you said sulfate, you're correct. And the derivative of the, uh, the polyatomic with the hydrogen forms what we call here sulfuric acid. Okay, notice here the SO4, the sulfate, and we're looking at hydrogen, but we're treating hydrogen as if it is a cation. Okay, we're treating it as a metal. So let's write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction between the following compounds. Magnesium oxide plus water. So we're looking for oxide and water. And there's, there are, those are some of our hints that we have one of these special types of synthesis reactions. So we know we're gonna form a base. So this magnesium, okay, because we are gonna form a base, and remember that bases have the OH. So this magnesium is going to combine with that OH to form magnesium hydroxide. Okay. Carbon dioxide. Okay. We have CO2 plus H2O. Remember now that we have a non-metal oxide. So a non-metal oxide forms an acid. Okay, what type of an acid? Acid. Well, we have an oxy acid. And remember, as we said, we think about polyatomics. Okay, so what polyatomic comes to mind when you see CO2? And if you said from CO2, if you're thinking carbonate, 
you're correct. Okay, now this charge is going to tell us also how many hydrogens are present with it, and there it is. We are forming here what we call carbonic acid. If you have any questions, please come and see me, and don't hesitate to, um, to send me an email.